Welcome to Zion's Cause Baptist Church. Celebrating the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ for 135 years. We are glad that you are with us today. We invite you to join with us in prayer. Praise and worship of our Lord and Savior. And grow with us as we receive the message today from God's Word. Oh, and 
Amen. Has he done great things in your life? Amen. Amen. Stand with us as we continue singing this morning, and we'll start next sing next joy to the world this morning. Yeah. Oh, and welcome each other this morning. Take a moment, just turn and wave to those upstairs and downstairs, and we'll do. Thank you, Mike, for reminding me of that this morning. But remain standing as we sing joy to the world this morning. Thank you for his joy this morning. Amen. You may be seated this morning. As you know, we are in Advent. And Brother Charles, I think it's joy this morning, right? We're talking about joy. So just watch the screens there as we look at our Advent this morning and we look at joy this morning.
the Lord. Very, very thankful for today. And we are glad that you're here. Glad to have those that are listening. Uh, we're on our YouTube channel this morning. We want to welcome you in our services as well as those that will be listening in the afternoon with Mediacom. And we are so glad to be in the Lord's house this day. Glad seeing you. Glad to have even in our sanctuary visitors that are with us today. Glad for you to be our guest. And we are so thankful unto the Lord that we can come and we can sing about about him and I am glad I have seen the light in the darkness how about you today how about you? Yes, indeed. Let's go to him in prayer. Heavenly Father, how wonderful it is that we can sing about you. And Father, we know the light in the darkness, and his name is Jesus Christ. Father, we are so glad to be here today and being able to share your word. And we thank you for those that are in person here today, as well as those that are watching us on YouTube and Mediacom as well. We come together, Lord, and we praise your name this day. Thank you for Christmas. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ. And it is his name we pray. And amen. Amen. Skies 
Rise of Bethlehem appeared a star While angels sang to lowly shepherds Three wise men seeking truth had traveled from afar Hoping to find the child from heaven Then falling on their knees they bowed before the humble Prince of Peace. I bring an offering of worship to my King. No one on earth deserves the praises that I sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. This morning, Heavenly Father, we are so glad that we can come this morning in your house and worship you and sing praises to you, Father, this morning. And Father, we just pray that you'll be with our pastors. He brings this message. And Father, as we are talking about joy today, just help us to have joy, the joy that you can fill us with when we ask you to come into our heart, Father, and be in our lives on a daily basis, Father. And we're so thankful for that during times, during hard times, Father. So, Father, we just lift you up this morning. We pray for our pastor as he brings the message. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. We are so glad to be able to share a message into you. And we're going to be, over the next two or three weeks, we are going to be sharing about the gifts of Christmas. The gifts of Christmas. And we're going to be talking about joy today. And then we're going to be talking about love. And then also that of peace over the next three Sundays. And the gifts of Christmas, you know, we might think of the Christmas gift that maybe you're buying right now. I know a lot of you are doing Christmas shopping right now. And, but 
But think about uh, the gifts that are eternal, and that's what we're going to be preaching about, gifts that are eternal. Now, uh, we don't have gifts that are eternal. Our gifts are temporary. They don't, they don't last very long. Sometimes we don't even remember what we get for Christmas, do we not? Can we go back last year and itemize everything that we received for that of Christmas? Well, there's one thing about the gifts of Christmas that Jesus Christ gives. They never change, folks. They are always the same, and they are eternal. And so today, as we think of gifts that last, that of joy, that of love, that of peace, today we're going to be talking about that joy that has been in our Advent and talking about joy that has been a part of our songs that we have sung together today about the joy that we receive at Christmas. Now today, the passage of Scripture we are going to share with you today is found in Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 2, and in verse number 10, we know this by heart. Where the Bible says, then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. That last part of that verse is where we're going to be at today. I bring you good tidings of great joy, not a little joy, but great joy. But notice, even though that the angel is talking to that of the shepherds and sharing this message, notice who it's going to be to all people, to all people, and that all people includes you and me today. And so let us go to the Lord today in thanking him for that. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today as we think of joy. Father, the joy that is eternal. It is in our heart, it is in our lives right now, and it will continue for all of eternity. Father, we thank you that you've given to us eternal gifts of, of joy, of love, and peace in our life. And Father, I pray today that we would be able to share the truth that is found in this one verse of Scripture today, and Father, how that it applies to our lives. Lord, we thank you for your joy. In Jesus' name we ask, and amen, and amen. Today we're going to be preaching on joy. And as we have been singing joy to the world, that is going to be our first point of our message today of that of joy to the world. Now, then it is probably, I don't know, it's probably in my top five of favorite Christmas songs that I like to sing at Christmas time. And we always sing them at church. You will play, you'll play them at home of that of joy to the world. And just kind of give you a little bit of background of what is going on. Isaac Watts. Now he lived back in the 1700s. Now, if, 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 if Danny Jaco was here this morning, now Danny, if you're listening right now, if you were here, my brother, I would ask you if, if you knew Isaac Watts that lived back in the 1700s. But since he is not here, I don't know, Paul, can you vouch for him or not? I'm sure that he heard of him. Yes, 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 indeed. Now, uh, lived back in 1700s, and he wrote this song back in the 1700s, Joy to the World. Now, not only did he write this song, but, but Isaac Rotz wrote around 750 different songs. And probably one, one of my favorite songs that he wrote, apart from Joy to the World, is I Must Survey the Wondrous Cross. Just a great, great. And, but he wrote this and, and pinned this down, and there has been others that have been impacted by this man's life. Preachers and, and singers and songwriters, all of the sort. Uh, even, even one person that, that began to read some of what he was doing in the 750 songs that he wrote, uh, this lady wrote 9,000 songs uh, in her lifetime too. And so uh, whenever Isaac Watts began writing this, we think about this passage of scripture right here in Luke chapter 2. And in, in, in in, in verse in the verse eight here or verse ten it says here, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all the people. Now you can say, well, I, I guess maybe Isaac Watts was was thinking about that. Well, we've just we've just sung that song just a few moments ago. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. 
and heaven and nature sing. Do you see the message? It's, it's a message of, 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 of the world receiving the joy that is come. And that is in Jesus Christ. The Lord has come. It says, joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrow grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. For as the curse, the curse of sin is found, he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. Now, as I say, this is one of our top songs. But notice the message that is given. Now, a lot of the Christmas message is not in this song. We do not see anything about the shepherds, do we? We do not see anything about the wise men. We do not see anything about Joseph and Mary. It is all about Jesus Christ and who that he is, that he is the Lord. He is the king. He is the savior. And he is here to take care of sin and sorrows and the curse of sin and to make his blessings flow. I believe Isaac Watts was onto something. I think he, he had seen something that put all of this into his mind. Oh, we can say, well, now, Brother Charles, he's in Luke chapter 2 uh, in verse number 10. Well, while we may think that, but really, Isaac Watts, whenever he was writing this song, he was inspired by another verse, verses of Scripture found in the Old Testament. There in the book of Psalms, Psalm 98, listen to what the psalmist said. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have ga gained him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation, his righteousness, he has revealed in the sight of the nations, as Isaac Watts says there, the glories of his righteousness and, and the wonders of his love. The Lord has made known his salvation. Verse number three, as he says, he has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout joyfully. To the Lord, all the earth, break forth in song, rejoice, and sing praises. And this is a little bit of what we've been doing today. Breaking forth in song, rejoicing, and singing praises. Now, Isaac Watts took this to heart. Going back to verse number one, it says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, a new song. Isaac Watts took that to heart. In pinning down the joy to the world, the Lord is come. Why did he write that song down in thinking about Psalm 98? He began to think of centuries had gone by and the world wanted to see God revealed in a personal way, in a physical way. And God did that in sending his son, Jesus Christ. Oh, it says here, sing to the Lord a new song. Now, while the 1700s, that's a long, long, long time ago. But whenever Isaac Watts wrote this, it was a new song. And folks, today, we are still to be writing new songs unto the Lord. We are to be singing songs unto the Lord. You say, well, Brother Charles, I don't feel I, I'm a good singer. Well, maybe take it your hand at writing songs. Who knows? 
The next greatest Christmas song may come from you. Only God knows that. And you say, oh, now, Brother Charles, many of these were written back and a long, long time ago. Well, one of the favorite songs in the last, I guess, maybe 20 plus years, 30 plus or 20 plus years is that of Mary, Did You Know? That's a new song. That's a new song. So I encourage you to look at that. As we sing, I'm reminded of what is said there, Jeremiah wrote in, in Lamentations 3, the Lord's loving kindness it says, never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Oh, today, we have a permanent gift from God, and that is joy. That is joy. Well, you may say, I don't feel like much joy this Christmas season. I may not feel like much joy in my heart and in my life. Well, secondly, <laughs> has COVID taken your joy? Has COVID taken your joy? For some, it has. COVID has taken your joy away out of your life. And right now, you don't have much joy. You don't have much rejoicing in your life. You do not have much, much that you can celebrate that you think about right now. But oh, let us look again to the Word of God about our joy. In the book of James, chapter 1, it says, My brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into various trials, when you go through difficult things in your life, and they say, now wait a minute, Brother Charles, this, ver this verse here, verse number two, what, what are you talking about? Counting it all joy. He said, Brother Charles, that seems like the craziest thing I have ever heard in my life. Craziest thing. Well, as we think that we're in the midst of what we are right now, and even, even we have Christmas that we're trying to celebrate, COVID has taken our joy. Well, let me explain something to you today. When it says here, my brother counted all joy when you fall into various trials, how can I do that? You can do that because you are with Jesus Christ with Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, how would it be today if you didn't have the Lord? How would it be today if you did not have Jesus Christ and COVID, folks? You talking about tough. You talking about bad. But by having Jesus Christ in our life, we can face these trials. We can face this pandemic. We can face when things seem impossible in our life because Christ gives pure joy. He says here, knowing that the testing of your faith, the testing of your faith, what does the testing of our faith do? It makes you stronger. It makes me stronger because we realize how great God is in these difficult times. And it produces patience. Then verse number four says, but, patient, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. How can I do that right now? Only through Jesus Christ. Only through the joy that he gives. Oh, but has COVID taken your joy? Has COVID taken your joy? You know, this past week, we've been doing our daily devotionals, and the majority of them has been coming out of the book of Ecclesiastes. And we look at Solomon, the wisest king that ever lived. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, he gives a summation of his life. And in that summation of his life, it's not good. Now, he started out a winner. I mean, God came to him, and God said to him, I mean, Explicitly, I will give you one wish. One wish. What do you want? Solomon says, 
I want wisdom. I want wisdom. God said, okay. Because you have asked for wisdom, not only am I going to give you wisdom, but I'm going to give you wealth. I'm going to give you fame. I'm going to give all these things to you. And so what does Solomon do? He's a winner in the beginning. But as you read Ecclesiastes chapter 2, he's a loser in the end. Because he begins to tell how he lived his life. Oh, he enjoyed life to the very, very best. <laughs> he enjoyed things. He bought as many things that he could. He built as many things that he could. Oh, he enjoyed money. Uh, he indulged himself with all kinds of pleasures in this world. And he says in the end, it was all for nothing. All for nothing. What is he saying here? Solomon lost his joy. He lost his joy. He lost his joy when he did not use the wisdom that God had given to him. How sad. You need the gift of God's joy. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. You know, our lives have changed in so many ways of how that we do and how that we go about and all these things. And up here on the pulpit, I have something. I think you recognize it, do you not? How many of you have seen this today? How many of you have used this today? You know, I don't know what it is anymore. I can't go buy one now without touching it. How about you? Huh? You know, I mean, it's just, it's just automatic. I mean, I, I have sanitized more in the, in, in the last, it's since March than I've ever sanitized in my life. I probably sanitized more than, uh, than the baths I took as a kid. I mean, I don't know, you know. But we look at this and say, oh, man, I, I cannot live without this now. I've got, I've got to have this in my life. I want to stay safe. I, I want to stay healthy. Do you want to stay safe and do you want to stay healthy spiritually? Remember the joy that has come to the world. The Lord is here. The Savior reigns. Don't be like Solomon. Don't be like Solomon and forgets it all and spends his life. He does a lot, but he does all the wrong things. And in the end, he paid for it. You say, well, Brother Charles, you don't know the situation I am. You don't know what all, what all that, that I am going through right now. Well, the psalmist also talks about this too. <laughs> In Psalm 30 and verse 5, it says, For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night. You and I, we have been through a long night this year. But joy, joy comes in the morning. You say, oh, I kind of get it, Brother Charles. I kind of get this joy. Well, let me just drive it home a little bit further. The reason, there is a reason why we have joy. The reason why we have joy is because of Jesus Christ. The Lord has come. The Savior reigns. He rules the world with truth and grace. But that came at a cost. That came as a cost. You see, whenever Jesus came to this earth, People called him master. Some called him teacher. Some called him the son of Beelzebub. But then there were titles that Jesus Christ received. And thirdly for today, he was called the man of sorrows. The one who brought joy to the world was called the man of sorrows. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, in verse 3, 
The Bible describes hundreds of years before Jesus was born in Bethlehem, laid in that manger, hundreds of years before Isaiah the prophet began to share about the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the prince of peace that was coming. But then also he shared about his life. And listen to the description that Isaiah shares of what would happen to Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 3, it says, Jesus is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Now let's ask ourselves a personal question. How do we feel when we are despised? Not good. Most of the time you can rattle our cage if, you just, if, we, feel, if we have the feelings of being despised. What about rejected? We don't like to be rejected, do we? Well, this is what Jesus Christ came to this world to be despised and to be rejected so that he could bring joy to you and to me. All going through this, he was despised and rejected, even by his own family. His own family really didn't even get the message till after the resurrection. The Bible says that he came to his own and his own received him not. They were not ready to accept him as the Messiah. They were not ready to accept him as the Son of God. Here a few Sundays ago, we preached on Judas, did we not? And in preaching on Judas, one of the twelve, one of the disciples betrayed him, despised and rejected by one of his friends. In the book of John chapter 11, we find the wonderful miracle of Lazarus coming back from the dead. Do you remember that? Oh, it's a beautiful picture, Mary and Martha. And, and Jesus comes to them, and, and both of them come to him. Jesus, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. But you and I, we know the end of the story of Lazarus coming back to life. But after that miracle, everybody's excited, everybody is happy, and I mean, it is the talk of the town. Lazarus has come back to life, and Jesus Christ is the one that did it. Well, then they begin to meet together. Jesus' own nation. And they begin to talk, and they said, you know what? This is bad. If Rome hears about this, they may think we're going to pull away from the Roman Empire and become an independent nation again. And then Caiaphas, the high priest, he said, it's a shame that the whole nation perishes because of one man. One man. You see, the religious leader that was to shine forth the truth and the light to the world, that the joy to the world is come, missed it. Caiaphas missed it because he was despised and rejected. And even in this chapter, if you were to read the end of that, he plots to kill Jesus Christ. Well, what does the man of sorrows do? He keeps right on. He's been sent for a reason. The joy of the world. Jesus Christ kept right on. Oh, he definitely Christ is an example to us today of one being despised. He is, a desire. he is definitely an example today of being rejected by men. Jesus knows what it is to be despised. Jesus knows what it is to be rejected, to be devastated. We know that Jesus Christ came to pray, pay for the price of our sins. 
But then also we hear the words of our Savior. In John chapter 16 and verse 33, he says, Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The man of sorrows. The man of sorrows. What kind of being would subject himself to being despised and rejected a being that wants to give joy to the entire world. To the entire world. And so we see the man of sorrows who took on sorrow that you and I might have joy. But then also, folks, today we have another important point that the one who brings joy will also judge. Psalm 98, we find that sing to the new Lord, sing to the Lord a new song. But if you were to back up into Psalm 96, in verse 13, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Now, listen to this. This psalm, which is hardly ever shared, is a, is a psalm that is, that is shared many times on Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day. Now here on this table, we have been talking about the advent of Jesus Christ, the first advent of Jesus Christ. Here we have here in verse number 13, it is talking about the second advent of Jesus Christ because he has brought joy to the world. Because he has brought <clears throat> God's plan of salvation to the world, he is coming again. Verse 13 affirms the reality that God will judge the entire world in righteousness and truth. We can count on it. It is going to happen. There is going to be a judgment one day and what we do with Jesus Christ is what the judgment is going to be about. For he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth, and he shall, he will, it's not a matter of if or might, he will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. So today, every one of you in this sanctuary, every one of you today that is listening through social media, have you received the joy to the world? Have you received the joy to the world? And if you have not, I ask you today to receive the gift of Christmas, the gift of Christmas because the Lord is come. The Savior reigns. The curse of sin has been paid for through the precious blood of Christ but we must accept it. I hope each one here today has Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life because in him is the greatest joy in all the world. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, as we bow before you, We thank you that you sent joy to the world through your son, Jesus Christ. And we have joy because of you. Father, if there's someone listening here today that they don't have the joy of Jesus in their heart and their life. 
I pray that they would take Jesus into their heart and their life. Father, there might be someone right now that says, I don't have Jesus in my heart. I pray, Lord, today that they would come to you and, and say, Dear Lord, I don't have your joy. I know that I need you. I know that I need Jesus. Jesus came that I might have joy. Forgive me of my sin. And I believe in you, Jesus, what you did for me on the cross. I give my heart, I give my life to you right now. Father, there might be someone that prayed those words today. Father, we think of the scripture that that whoever calls upon you shall be saved. Whoever calls upon you shall receive your joy. Thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Will you stand as we sing? If you made the decision today to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we want to celebrate that new start with you. Please call our church office at 270-527-9696 so we can encourage you on your new journey. If you are in need of prayer, we have prayer partners waiting to join in praying for you. Please call our church office at 270-527-9696. Again, that's 270-527-9696. Thank you for being part of our service today. Our prayer at Zion's cause is that this service drew you closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. We look forward to you joining us again next week. On behalf of the pastor, staff, and congregation, may God richly bless you and keep you. This has been a production of Zion's Cause Baptist Church.